Hello everyone, welcome back for another lesson. In this lesson, we will talk about constraints on materials. So in the last lesson, we talked about properties of materials. Now we're gonna talk about what happens when we apply a force uh, to an object. So when we do apply a force to an object, those objects are under a mechanical constraint. So there are five mechanical constraints we will look at. And those constraints lead to three different outcomes, which we call deformations. So first we'll look at the types of deformation. We have elastic, plastic, and fracture. So elastic, you know what an elastic looks like. Uh, let's say it's made of rubber. Well, you know that you can stretch it, and if you let it go, it's going to go back to its original shape and uh, size. So that's exactly what this means. The constraint leads to a temporary change in the shape or dimensions of the material. And when the constraint is removed, the material returns to its original form. So it's temporary and the object will go back to its original form. Then we have a plastic deformation. So that leads to a permanent change. So in the shape and the dimensions of the material. So even if the constraint is removed, the material is permanently changed. It's permanently deformed. If you think of Play-Doh, Play-Doh is very plastic. You can press on it and make different shapes out of it, but if you let go of the Play-Doh, the Play-Doh is not going to be like an elastic. It's not going to go back to the shape it had before. It's permanently changed. And then we have fracture. You understand the concept of fracture, breaking a bone? Well, it's this, the exact same idea. The constraint is so intense that the material will break. So these are the three responses that materials may have if you apply a force on them. Now, what are those types of constraints? So when we apply a force, it has a certain effect. There's five different ones. The first one is shearing. So that is a force that will cut or tear through a material. So you can use a pair of scissors to do this. You can use a saw, you can use a can opener. And at the top right over here, you have the symbol that we use to represent shearing. So you've got two half uh, arrows. Sometimes they will be pointing towards each other, sometimes they'll be one above the other, but essentially there are two half arrows to represent that there's basically a fracture, there's a cut between uh, the two parts of the original material. So the same way if we look at the can, well we know that there's going to be the body and there's going to be the top that will be the two parts of what was originally a one-piece object. The second one is called the second one sorry is called deflection. So that's a force that bends material. You have the um, icon over here, the, the the drawing that represents deflection. So you have two forces that act together, pushing in the same direction, and you have one force that pushes against those two. Okay, so if you look over here, you have the gymnast. His weight is pushing downwards where his hands are. So normally, the force that is pushing opposite of the other two is in the center of the object. So here you have the force pushing down, but really the legs of these objects are pushing upwards, right? They're maintaining the bars at a certain height. So you've got the legs pushing upwards, all four of them, well, two per item. And you have his weight on this hand pushing downwards, a little bit like you have here. This is sideways, but it's the same idea. If you're sitting on a chair, well, the legs of the chair are maintaining the chair in place, so they're pushing upwards, but your weight is pushing downwards because you're being attracted towards the floor. So this is another example of a deflection. Then we have tension. So tension is when you have two opposite forces pulling in opposite directions. So this would be an example of that. You have children pulling on a rope in opposite directions, so it, it kind of stretches the material. It stretches the rope to a certain extent. The same idea here. You have a dog pulling in one direction. The child is, is trying to hold on, so you're, you're naturally, when you try to pull a dog back to, to prevent the dog from running, literally, well, you're, you're pulling back. That's, that's exactly what it is. So you're pulling in the opposite direction as the dog. So the leash gets mildly stretched. So this is an example of tension. The next constraint is called compression. So if you take cans and you squish them or you crush them, well, that's an example of compression. So the two forces would be uh, moving in opposite directions, but in this case, they're facing each other. They're, they're moving towards the center. 
right? The same way on a can, you're going to be pressing from under and from above towards the center of the can. Another example would be when people have uh, cardiac problems, um, they have a lot of water retention, so they, they, they kind of bloat. They tend to bloat, and we want to stimulate their circulation. So uh, we ask them sometimes, the doctors ask them, to wear special socks that will compress uh, the leg to push, to help with the blood flow towards the heart. So these are compression socks. They press towards basically the middle of the leg, helping the blood flow upwards towards the heart, the heart against gravity, basically. Last one, we have torsion. So to, a torsion is like we twist, when we twist something. So we twist a material, and you can see here the image that we use is literally two arrows that are turning in a circle. So when we twist something, it's called torsion. So all these, if I may go back, all these can lead to either one of three things, either an elastic change, a plastic change, or a fracture, depending on the force that is used, the type of material that is used, and the amount of time that the force is put on a given material. So that's the end of the lesson. If you have questions, uh, please don't be uh, afraid to reach out. And otherwise, I'll see you for your next lesson. And until then, take care.